Okay, in this lesson, we're going to go over some basic um, circle vocabulary, and we're first going to start off by going over um, how to name basic geometric figures. So, um, the way we name a point is it's named with a single capital letter, letter Okay, so if this is our point and there's a letter A next to it, uh, next to it, we would call it point A. That would be the name, how we would name it. Okay, a line, so a line is a path that extends forever in both directions. It's named with two points. and um, the line symbol on top. Okay, so if we're looking at this line, if there's two points on it, say points A and B, the way we would name this line and refer to it is we would say A, B with a line symbol on top, or you can even switch the order and say B, A. So in this case, the order of the letters does not matter. Okay, the next one is a line segment. So a line segment differs from a line because a line segment starts and ends. Okay, but we actually name it pretty much the same way. So it's named with two points again, but instead of a line symbol on top, it's a line segment symbol on top. Okay, so we don't use the arrows. So if this is my line segment, and this is X, and this is Y, we would refer to this line segment as XY with a line segment on top, or YX with a line segment on top. All right, the last one is an angle, and we've named angles before. Um, but this one is named with three points. Okay, and the vertex has to be in the middle. Okay, and we use an angle symbol in front. So the vertex is the point of the angle. When naming your angle, that letter always has to be in the middle. Okay, so if this is angle S, the vertex is T, and this point is U, we would call it angle STU. Or you can even reverse the order of the letters to say U, T, S, as long as the middle letter is your vertex. Okay, so now that we know how to name basic geometric figures, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at circles and see how these geometric figures show up in circles and what we would call them. Okay, so uh, for the first part, you're going to be filling out the... Um, the paper that has circle, radius, core, diameter, secant, tangent, and then you'll switch to the other paper when we talk about angles and arcs and circles. Okay, so for this, I'm just really going to talk through the definitions, and if you need to copy it down, um, and I'm going too fast, just pause the video, copy it down, and then play it again uh, so you can finish copying down the vocab. Okay, so first one we're going to look at is the definition of a circle. Okay, so a circle is the set of all points in a plane equidistant from a given point. Okay, so the way we name a circle is we name it based on the center. So the part that you should write down is just the definition and the name. The part inside the cloud is kind of just a way for you to remember. If you want to try and fit that in some way, you can, um, but that's just more for your, no your knowledge. Okay, so looking at this circle, the center is A, we would call this circle A. Okay, I am also going to be doing quite a bit of highlighting here. Um, so this is circle A, and we name a circle based on the center. Okay, so the next word is radius. So the definition of a radius is the distance from a point on the circle to the center. Okay, so any point on the circle, the distance between that and the center is the radius. Okay, so there's a few radiuses here that I named. So AE is a radius, AB is a radius, AF is a radius. Um, it doesn't matter the order of the letters, but the radius is a line segment, okay, which is why we name it this way. 
Okay, so the one that I'm going to highlight is uh, AE. So AE is right here. Okay, I'm not going to highlight every single radius because uh, some of these parts are also other things. So AE is my radius. Um, another thing I should point out, I guess, is a radius is a line segment and it always will include the center point and a point on the circle. So when naming it, since this is circle A, all of your radius should, should include the letter A. Okay, the next word is chord. So the chord is a line segment, so it's something that starts and ends, with both endpoints on the circle, okay? So chord will always start and end on the circle. So in looking at our diagram, CE is an example of a chord because it starts and ends on the circle. Uh, GF is another example of a chord, okay, if we're labeling it like this, GF. And BF is another example of chord because it starts and ends on the circle. Okay, so the one that I'm gonna highlight is uh, CE. CE is a chord. Okay, the next word is diameter. So the diameter is a type of chord that passes through the center. Okay, so a diameter is a chord that it must go through the center of the circle. You can think of it as uh, the line segment that cuts the circle in half. So in this case, BF is the only diameter. And you, remember, you can name a line segment. It, the order doesn't matter. So you can say BF or you can say FB. So BF is my diameter. It's a type of chord that goes through the center. So not every chord is a diameter, but every diameter does have to be a chord. All right, the next word is secant. So a secant is basically a line that crosses all the way through a circle. It slices a circle. So uh, the more precise definition is a line intersecting a circle at exactly two points. Okay, so if we look at this, this there's two lines on our paper. There's this one up here and this one here. So the reason why GF is a secant is because it intersects a circle at two points. It intersects at G and intersects at F. So GF is my secant. Okay, and remember the order of the letters does not matter, so you could also say FG if you wanted. Okay, the last word um, for lines and segments is tangent. So a tangent is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. So a tangent is a line that intersects at exactly one point. Okay, we would call that point the point of tangency. So looking at our diagram, HD is a line. Okay, intersects a circle at exactly one point, and that's point D. So D is the point of tangency. So the way we name a tangent line is using our notation, it would just be HD. So HD is our tangent line. So another way you can think about it is a tangent line just skims the edge of a circle, or I like to say the tangent line touches your circle. Your chord is contained, and your secant line slices. Okay, so now you're going to switch to the other vocab sheet that has the uh, vocabulary about um, angles and arcs. Okay. So the one that has central angle, uh, inscribed angle, etc. So we're switching to angles and arcs now. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is a central angle. So a central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center. Okay, so notice that we're using our angle notation here, and remember we use three letters to name an angle. So the vertex is the pointy part, and it must be on the center in order for it to be a central angle. So look in our diagram, EAF, E, A, F, this is a central angle because the vertex, A, is the center of the circle. So angle E, oops, E, A, F is a central angle. 
okay? You can also think of BAE, which is right here, BAE, that's also a central angle because A is the vertex and that's the center of the circle. All right, the next word we're gonna talk about is an arc, okay? So an arc is any unbroken part of the circumference. So the circumference is the outside of the circle. Okay, so an arc is any part of the circumference. So GB, which is uh, right here, that is considered an arc. Okay, CFG, CFG is also considered an arc. Okay, so sometimes we name it with two letters, sometimes we name it with three, and we'll talk about the difference in a second. Um, for arcs, we use this notation. There's a little arc over the top. Okay, so GB is an arc, which I'm going to highlight GB. Okay. So now let's differentiate between uh, minor arcs and major arcs. Okay, so minor arcs are the small arcs. So in particular, it's any arc that is half less than halfway around the circle. So that arc we highlighted before, GB, is considered a minor arc because that's less than half of the circle. So we name minor arcs using only two letters. Okay, so GB is considered a minor arc. Uh, CF is also considered a minor arc because that's less than halfway. EF is considered a minor arc. And GD is also considered a minor arc. So anything that is less than halfway. So I'm going to highlight CF for my minor arc. Uh, or sorry, I'm going to highlight EF actually. So EF is a minor arc. All right, so um, a major arc, so I'm going to go ahead and do that one actually right now. A major arc is any big part of the rim, okay? So in particular, it's an arc that goes more than halfway around the circle. So looking at B, F, B, F, G, that is a major arc because it goes more than halfway around the circle. So the way that you um, figure out what, it, what arc it is is just go in the order of the letters. You go from B to F to G. Okay, C-E-B, C-E-B would be this big arc right here. Okay, so I'm going to highlight uh, B-F-G. So B-F-G is my major arc. And we name major arcs using three letters. You must use three letters because if I'm referring to BFG and I just say BG, I'm referring to the minor arc. But if I want the major arc, you do need to use three letters. And you're allowed to pick any letter between the endpoints. So you could also call this arc BCG, it would be the same arc. All right, so now let's talk about. Um, inscribed angles. So we've talked about central angles and central angles have a vertex on the center. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle. So here's our circle. An angle whose vertex is on the circle is considered an inscribed angle. So angle B F G is inscribed because F is the vertex and that's on the circle. C, E, A is also considered inscribed because the vertex is on the center. So I'm going to highlight B, F, G. So B, F, G is considered an inscribed angle. Okay, the last word here is a semicircle. And a semicircle is exactly half of a circle. So they are arcs, so we need to use the correct arc notation. To find semicircles, look for diameters, okay? Because diameters cut circles in half, which means we'll end up with a semicircle on both sides. So BDF, BDF is a semicircle. And also uh, FGB is also considered a semicircle. So uh, BDF 
is a semicircle. Okay, the last thing I wanna go over is just some practice naming arcs and angles. So this is the front side of your practice sheet. Um, so we know central angles, we know inscribed angles. So the difference between a central angle and an inscribed angle is a central angle, the vertex is the center of the circle versus an inscribed angle, the vertex is on the circle, okay? So um, the other thing we should refer to, anytime you have an angle, it forms an arc, okay? And the arc is the part between the end points of your angle, okay? So first thing I wanna do is I just wanna name the central angle um, in this diagram. So the central angle in this diagram is just angle BOC. Okay, and BOC is right here. There are no other central angles. That is the only central angle. Okay, in terms of inscribed angles, I see a few. So the first one I see is BDC. That is an inscribed angle. D is the vertex, and that's on the circle. So angle BDC. Okay, another one I see is BAC. B, A, C, again, vertex is on the circle. Um, and I think that's it, actually. There are no other inscribed, actually, there are some other inscribed angles. There's some this way. Uh, I also see uh, A, C, D on this end, angle A, C, D. And then I also see Uh, I also see angle ABD, so ABD. Okay, so you can tell as I was going over that, sometimes it's hard to see, um, but again, going over it, I see BDC, I see BAC, and then if we flip to the other side, it's ACD and ABD. D. So these are my inscribed angles. Okay, so the arc formed by any angle, whether it's a central angle or an inscribed angle, is called an intercepted arc, okay? So if we're looking at angle B, O, C, the intercepted arc would be B, C. And remember, you need to use the correct notation for arcs. With arcs, you put an, you put an arc over the top. All right, B, A, C, so B, A, C, the arc, the intercepted arc is the part between the endpoints. So that arc is gonna be B, C as well. Okay, uh, B, D, C, B, D, C. Okay, the arc formed by the endpoints would be B, C. So if you look at these three angles, these three angles have the same intercepted arc. And if you notice, these three angles have the same endpoints, B, C, which is why their intercepted arcs are all the same. Okay, so now if we look at D, B, A, D, B, A, the arc formed by that angle, my endpoints are A and D, my arc would be A, D. Okay, then if we look at DCA, DCA, again we have endpoints A and D, which means my arc is AD. So something I'm gonna highlight here that maybe you can see is that the intercepted arc of my angles consists of my endpoints. So you can always tell the intercepted arc based on the endpoints of your angle. BOC, my arc would be BC. BAC, my arc would be BC, et cetera, et cetera.